We're so lucky. We live in like such an amazing place. And we're going to continue to live in an amazing place. They're not going to feck it up. Do you want to go down on the right side? It's a bit steeper, but it's pretty cool. It looks like a sea lion down there on the sand. I mean, some people go way closer. He's having a snooze, so you could probably comfortably get closer. It's more for our protection, but also it's just sort of part of the whole thing of, you know, not harassing any animals, even if they're not afraid of us. It's just still, it's like, we're coming into their environment and just to respect that. New Zealand endemic breed, uh, the rarest sea lion in the world. Said about 9,000 down in the sub-Antarctic, around the Auckland Islands mainly, and then the mainland breeding population, about 180. They'll usually start getting active at around an hour, two hours before it gets dusky. Yeah. Um, and more of them will usually, like, what they quite often do is they'll swim along and they'll poke their heads out of the water to see if there's other sea lions on the beach. And if they see ones there, they'll actually come out to hang out with them because they're like uber social. And uh, quite often before they go out to swim, they'll just be like messing around with each other for a couple of hours. It's almost like, I mean, I'm not sure, but it's almost like they're socializing time. This one looks a bit older. It's got the mane. The one back there would have probably been about like six years old. They don't like reach full maturity till they're 10. Yeah. And the mane gets more prominent as they get older. Because they're not afraid of us. With seals, they definitely say you should never block their passage to the water because if they get spooked, their instinct is to run towards the water. Sea lions, it doesn't make any difference. They'll run either way. The three um, couch surfing girls stayed with me last year and they, they came back. They'd been to Sandfly Bay. And they'd taken all these photos and they were showing them to me. And there was one photo of them like lying lishy on the sand next to a sea lion. And I was just like, if I, I could have slapped them. I was really annoyed with them about it. I was like, do you not realize, like, you know, what you're doing? That, you know, if one of them just decided to get up and go for you. They're not, I mean, it's not that they're aggressive, really, but, you know, they could give you a bite and they give you a, a terrible fright. It's very rare, yeah. But if they did, usually, I mean, it's, it's not even in, like, being bad, it's, I think it's more, yeah, they're like, oh, and what do you taste like? Yeah. I used to be spooked by them before, but um, I got chased a couple of months ago. We were, had a, a group of people, like, and we were going into the dunes, and like, I was just, like, you know, I was saying, it's just coming right towards me, like, really close. Um, I just got up, I got away just in time, like, but I just got a real fright from it. And, it just, and he was a big male, and he was going really fast, and he was roaring at me, mm. so, it's given me a lot more respect for them. Yeah. Uh, there's about 160 boys, so the population's completely skewed. It's, uh, it's sort of tough for the girls because there's like too many boys. And so the boys go down to the sub Antarctics if they're needing some female action. They go down for like a month over the summer and they'll come back again. Um, but they think the reason that the females are the colour of sand is actually to stop them being hassled by the boys all the time. But it seems to work because quite often we'll have like loads of boys on the beach together and we'll have a female further down and like they won't be going near her. Do you know they're related to bears? If you look at their flipper though, their claw is like sort of embedded in it there and if you see like the way the nails come out, it actually looks like a bear claw. And when you see like the really big males, like we had one in the dunes at work one day, he's fast asleep and his mane was all puffed out and whatever way his body was turned, I swear to God, it was a bear lying on the grass. <laughs> it's just like, oh. Well, these guys are about 400 kilos. It's not usually as common for sea lions to attack penguins, but we are getting more situations with females. Um, and we had a female last year, like where I've been working and she took 10 penguins within the space of about a month, which was like an absolute disaster. But what she did was she parked up on one side of the beach and penguin was coming home she took it and obviously liked it 
and just kept on coming back, but she'd hide behind the rocks so the penguins wouldn't see her. And unfortunately, because of the time frame, because we're only you know around by two hours a day, so she'd all this the rest of the day to pretend to get them, and she was yeah very successful. But the thing is, like on land, that's why penguins are so scared of sea lions because they don't have the speed advantage, whereas in the water they're fine. It also creates the quandary where, like, now that you're getting more sea lions on the mainland here, which is fantastic, but because they're more around the areas where the penguins are, it means there's more potential for attack. So you're dealing with two critically endangered species, one attacking the other, and you're not meant to do anything about that. So it leaves you with this massive moral dilemma. I was assuming that they might have seen us. I mean, it could be timing as well, but it just, I mean, by rights, yeah, us being there. I mean, timing-wise, it was okay, but I realized with the time, it was like, good for us to go up now. But it wouldn't have been good to stay down there because they definitely wouldn't have come in. The ones here seem to be particularly nervous of people. Well, their behavior is pretty, pretty much the same, regardless of whether they have chicks there or not. But the only problem is if they do have chicks, um, and they're coming back and they're, they've got food in their stomach and they go back and see the chicks may not necessarily get fed that evening or get fed in time and that's actually the reason why they closed Boulder Beach to the public because the chicks were actually losing weight um, because the parents weren't getting back to them often enough because of people being around and it was a huge problem and it's made a big difference to their chances of survival now. The so chicks need to be about two kilos heavier than the parents when they leave them because they're not, they're not taught to fish or to swim or anything, they have to figure it out themselves. They generally come in individually. Yeah. I mean, they probably would come in more as a group if there was more of the room, but there's so few. Yeah. They don't really have the luxury. But they tend to, it's, they don't time their arrival home deliberately together. Right. It's just potluck if they do. There's a few boxes. Right there, yeah. Penguin? Yeah. Yep. Where? It's hopping, hopping along. Oh. See it? It's shaking. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, I do see now. Actually, do you see the, there's a penguin on the rock down there? Oh, okay. So, oh, yeah. see the yellow bit of like kelp or whatever to the right of that? Yeah, you oh, can yeah. see it. He's yeah. turning on his side. See his wife. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's hopped up. Oh, these two. That'll be the one. Good spotting. Oh, yeah. Mm. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. 